Cheap and Cheerful, and today we're looking at the best USB-C soldering irons, Episode 2. We'll be checking out a couple of new units, plus the best units from Episode 1, as well as testing a bunch of USB-C adapters and power banks with every unit. It's hands-on testing and thermal shenanigans, all the facts, none of the faff, coming right up. <laughs> All soldering irons and USB-C adapters were sent by AliExpress. Affiliate links in the comments below if you'd like to support my work. So last year's episode crowned the Finercy HSO2, AlienTech T80 and Miniware TS series as my top picks depending on your use case and budget, along with the SL108 as a great cheap 100 water for about 25 bucks. However, just as I'd finished, Alien Tech dropped the T90, and of course I overlooked the Secure S99, thanks to everybody who let me know. So today we'll close that gap with a full suite of tests and a quick recap on the best units for you, with all the data published at cheerful.cheap, so you can form your own opinion and not just listen to mine. First up, the Alien Tech T90. Alien Tech calls this their luxury model luxury. above the basic T65 and the standard T80, more than enough for most people, but now there's the T90 as their top tier pick. The T90 comes in a few different versions that you need to know about. First of all, there's the T90A for precision work at only 65 watts, the T90B, which is good for most general work up to 140 watts, and the T90C that runs at 130 watts as it's designed for crusty old T. 65 tips which proved problematic for me but we'll get into that in a moment. Unboxing you get this nice plastic case much nicer than the T80's cardboard sleeve though it's not too bad. It's got a quick release cap just like that. A little bit different to the T80's screw-on cap that I personally like a bit better. Power jumps from 100 watts on the T80 to 140 watts on the T90B. She's a bit thicker around the waist just like me, but still comfy to hold and not a lethal weapon like this big ass Finercy. My hands are registered as lethal weapon. The new color IPS screen is a nice upgrade <coughs> and it auto detects your charger's maximum power, which is handy, but that's where the dream ends. As soon as I opened it, I found the tip pre-installed and seriously stuck. I mean, it was tighter than a nun's corset. Eventually, I decided to use a bit of maximum force and it finally came unstuck, but not before chewing off the second band and leaving a whole bunch of shrapnel inside that I had to remove. Powering up, the screen is bright and it finally shows the input wattage. Really handy if you don't have a USB tester like the Power Z or the Finercy to check it's all running properly. Now, if you were thinking of getting a Power Z but saw how expensive they are, around 75 bucks in the US, there's now a clone out that sells for just 29 bucks. I've linked them both below. I'm getting the clone in soon and I'll compare them both and do a proper review. So like and subscribe if you wanna see that. Now, most soldering irons come with a dodgy 65 watt cable, but Alien Tech have listened and in the T90, they included a proper 240 watts charge cable. However, you'll still need a proper power source, ideally a 140 watt adapter or a power bank. We'll check out some good ones of those in just a minute. Now, finally, there's been a bit of controversy about the repairability of the T90, because unlike the T80, which comes apart with a single screw in the back here, and the whole thing just slides out. The T90 takes from the Apple School of Design and has a glued in screen with lots of fiddly bits. Let's move on to the Secure. All right, you asked for it. It is the Secure 150 watt S99 with flagship features for just 30 bucks. And at 22 grams, it's lighter than a AA battery and looks amazing on paper. So if you're into RC or FPV racing drones and have a bunch of 5S or 6S batteries lying around, this is a great cheap and cheerful pick. But if you want to use it as a normal iron at home, well, there's a few things you need to be aware of. Otherwise, it's likely to overload your charger and roast your nuts off. So first of all, there's no inrush protection. High power devices surge a whole bunch of current when first plugged in, way more than usual, which can overload power banks and chargers. Now 6S batteries will handle that no problem, but most chargers and power banks are gonna trip and reset, causing the iron to boot loop. Now Squire's fix for this was to ship it with a weird, is this hot, non-standard 
5 ohm tip that limits the current and caps you at 65 watts. So forget 150 watts unless you're on batteries. What's more, those non-standard tips mean any normal 245 tip you insert won't work. Here's me plugging in the standard 245 from the T80 into the Secure. Turn it on and it's an immediate restart. So I guess you're stuck buying tips from Secure. And before you ask, I tried a 65 watt USB cable and that worked maybe one out of five times. Moving on, and the body's a stainless steel skeleton internally, ending in a flamethrower style tip. Speaking of flamethrowers, check out this photo I found of Sigourney Weaver testing the actual flamethrower on the set of Alien in 1978. Absolutely smoking. Back to the iron, the whole shebang is wrapped in some kind of glass fiber reinforced PA6. Thanks, AVE. So it's really smooth and sleek, especially if you use it for a long time, it can get quite hot and slippery. Now, in practice, despite all those limitations, the iron is actually really nice to use. I tested it on a bunch of XT60 cables and some small stuff too, which it was just perfect at. And to be honest, I quite like it. Now the T80 and the Finercy are still my favourites, but I reckon if you grab this iron for 30 bucks, along with a Ugreen 65 watt adapter, which is quite cheap, or even this little 100 watt Ugreen power bank that works quite well, it's going to be a pretty formidable combination for a very attractive price. I've linked all those below. I'd recommend grabbing a package with a few extra tips and it'll last you ages. Probably the only thing that actually bothered me was the lack of a cap. So most modern irons come with a cap that allows you to turn it off, chuck the cap on and throw it in your pocket. But do that with the S99 and you're gonna be getting some hot roasted nuts. Another nice feature is it's quite easy to open and repair. There's a screw here and there's a screw there. And I think that's about it. Pretty much the same as the T80. But I do like how the T80 and the T90 secure their USB ports right around the edges using the case. Not so much on the secure, kind of seems like it might be soldered directly to the mainboard. So I wonder how long that's going to last. But if you're careful, given how cheap it is, I really don't think it's much of a problem. Let's get on to the testing. So I first tested the T80 using this small but powerful Ugreen power bank. Now by default, the T80 is set to 65 watts because that's more than enough than you need for most purposes. And the higher you go, the faster you burn out the heating element inside the iron and also your tips. But if you like to live dangerously, you can press both buttons, go to power trim and set 100 watts. So the T80 has no problem whatsoever pulling a full 100 watts from this little power bank, which is honestly pretty impressive. So same deal on the T90 with the settings, but this time we can boost it a lot higher. Using the same Ugreen 100, it detects it as a 100 watt unit and doesn't try to draw more than 65 watts. Strange, but typical USB-C inconsistency. So we'll switch over to the larger Ugreen 200 watts. Now this is marketed as a 200 watt unit, but it's 140 watts from a single port. I like this unit because it's allowed on a plane, even though it's quite big and it puts out a whole bunch of power. So connecting the T90, it registers as 140 watt EPR and the T90 is able to pull 127 watts, close enough to the 130 watts that Alien Tech advertises for this T90C model. Now keep in mind, if you get the T90B, you'll get closer to the full 140 watts. Overall, pretty good so far. Next, the Secure S99. So the smaller 100 watt Ugreen is perfect for this as a field unit, pulling 67 watts, which is about right with the USB-C model. So while we're here, let's check out the Finercy HS02, which is my favorite from the last review. Plugging this beast into the little 100 watt U green power bank feels a bit abusive and the little beggar agrees since as soon as the Finercy starts really cranking on it the power bank shuts down with an ICP error code. I assume that means iron's completely pissed but maybe you can come up with a better one. Breaking out the larger 140 watt unit and it's easily able to handle the Finercy pulling up to 96 watts for this 100 watt iron. And finally, let's check out the 25 buck chuck, the Aineng SL108. My pick for budget iron when you don't need anything fancy, but you still want that 100 watts power. So this easily draws the full 100 watts from the larger 140 watt Ugreen power bank. Really such a great budget iron this. Comes with a cap 
and a grip, both features missing from the Secure S99, and it's got the quick release cap just like the T90. So next, let's talk about heat up speed. In the last episode, I wasted days trying to measure the tip of a soldering iron with an infrared camera before learning it's a terrible, almost impossible way to do it. In this shot, the tip shows about 200 degrees, but just behind it, which should be cooler, it's reading over 300 degrees. So for the next episode, I purchased a soldering iron temp tester that you physically touch the tip to, but for today, we're just gonna have to do it approximately. I'll be using the P3 since we can focus right in on the tip and get some really nice shots. First up, let's check out the T80 at 100 watts. And I count a respectable four to five seconds from start until the temperature settles, meaning it's reached about 350 degrees or 662 Fahrenheit that I'd set it at. Okay, next, the T90 running at 140 watts. Now, all of these are being powered by the 140 watt Ugreen power bank. So the T90 took at least 10 seconds for the temperature to stabilize. Don't worry, I don't think it's at fault. Most likely it's the generic tip I had to install after the original one broke on arrival. So I'll have to test it again in the next episode when the replacement tip arrives and I've got my proper soldering iron temperature tester. Onto the S99, and so it's claimed to reach 350 degrees or 662 Fahrenheit in about five seconds, which seems a bit too fast to me. So I won't know for sure until I get the testing tool for the next video, but just by looking through the thermal, it takes about 10 seconds for the tip to stop increasing in temperature, telling me that's how long it took to reach the set 350 degrees. It's still plenty fast, but I'll have to retest it when that tool arrives. So moving on, we'll quickly test the Fenersi and I count six seconds the same as last time. Last but not least, let's check out the super cheap Aning SL108. And although I counted nine seconds last time, this time we get just six seconds. But how? Well, checking out the PowerZ, and it looks like it's agreed on PD 3.1 EPR, 140 watts. That's a 140 watt connection with the Ugreen power bank. Now this is only running at 100 watts. It's a 100 watt soldering iron, 97 watts or so, but she wants to go even faster. The fact that it, it, it allows up to 140 in the connection, I don't know, this thing is bitching. The Aining unit is just continuously surprises me for 25 or 30 bucks. It was 25 bucks before the tariffs. Checking now, I think it's about 30 bucks, still a great deal. Okay, so I've just finished a bunch of testing using all of the irons with all of the power banks and USB-C adapters and cables in every combination I could think of. Now, essentially everything worked together well with a few caveats. First of all, the T90 doesn't seem to like a combination of Aoyohi charger and Aoyohi cable because it would boot loop when cold, plugging in a power Z in between the cable and the charger and it worked perfectly fine, telling me it's a negotiation issue. For some reason, the T90 just doesn't like negotiating 140 watts with any of the anchor products, but the cables work fine with other adapters and the adapter worked fine with other cables. It's just when you're using both an Aoyohi cable and Aoyohi adapter. So if you're getting one of these, be aware of that. As for the power banks, both power banks work perfectly fine with all of these, except for the smaller power bank couldn't do full power on every single one of them, apart from the T80. The T80 was able to do 100% power with a small power bank, just fine. The others require to be detuned down to about 87% power. That said, with the Secure, you're only at 65 watts anyway, so this is perfectly fine for that. For anything else, if you want a power bank to use full power with any of these, I'd recommend the Ugreen 140 watt. I've linked all of them down below. As for the USB-C adapters, they all work perfectly fine with every cable, the only exception being the Aoyohi charger and the Aoyohi cable didn't talk or play nice well with the T90 when it was first booting up from cold. Now all of these are linked below with some notes on which one to get and which one works best with what. I've also put some more details at cheerful.cheap including all the tables and charts and data. Okay, best overall. Look, if you asked me last time, I probably would have said, I think I definitely said the Finersi. The Finersi is a fantastic iron, but these days, looking at what's here now, sure, the T90 has more bells and whistles, but I reckon the T80 is more straightforward. I feel you can rely on it. It's simple. It's got most of the features. It's repairable. The cap screws on properly, and it's slim without being fiddly. Plus, it's a bit cheaper than the T90. Links below for that one. 
maybe this is my bias because I had the issue with the T90 because the T90 is an excellent unit. It comes with a case. Uh, it isn't much more than the T80. It shows the wattage on the display, which is really handy, especially if you don't have something like a Power Z. It's the latest tech, so it goes up to 140 watts. The T90 is a great unit, don't get me wrong, but if I had to recommend to a friend, just get this one, it's just going to work and you'll love it, I would probably just say the T80. Now, for those who do want to go for the T90, the one you most likely want to get is the T90B. Uh, it's the 140 watts. It's for most general soldering. If you're doing PCBs and very small, delicate work, then you want to go the T90A. Only if you're a dinosaur like me and you want to keep the old, uh, the old tip styles, the T65 tips, only in that case would you get the C like I did. For more compact irons used for precision or travel, the Miniware TS101 and TS21 are both brilliant. I don't have them here today. I gave them away to a couple of colleagues. I looked at them in detail in the last episode there are 100 watt units classic miniware quality grab the 101 if you want a slim iron that fits 245 tips good for most jobs if you want something tiny for precision work the TS21 is the way to go sadly I just can't recommend the S99 for most general users you know it's designed for repairing RC and full-size racing drones if that's you go for it. I've tried to find the best price uh, in the link below for the S99, but prices will change. So start where I sent you on the link below and then just look around to see if anybody's changed their price and sold it a bit cheaper. As for power banks, look, my pick has to be the bigger 140 watt slash 200 watt Ugreen power bank. It ran all the irons without a hitch. It holds enough juice for longer sessions at 20,000 milliamp hours. And you can take it on a plane, no worries. That's actually why I bought it. It's big, but not so big, you're not allowed to take it on a plane. The smaller unit impressed me too, the 100 watt unit. It works just fine with the T80. You can also use it with all of the other devices. You just need to dial the soldering iron down to about 85% and it'll do fine. Moving on for USB-C adapters, look, all of these worked just fine. Check out my video on USB-C adapters. I've got a couple of videos if you wanna get into the details but very quickly. If you just want something that works at the best price, the Volt Me is very good, 140 watts. You can get a 100 watt version, but it's pretty much the same price. I'll put a link below. It comes in UK, US. I think there's an Australian version. I'll link those below. For the Aussies, though, I'd recommend the Ugreen. There's two Ugreens available. I'll link them both below with some comments on each. But if you just want something that's going to work and it's going to be reliable, definitely go for the Ugreen. That is only 100 watts though. If you want something more premium, check out the Anchor and the Yohi and also the Pixel. Uh, they're 140 watt USB-C devices. Really nice. Check them out in my video if you want more details. Something else to remember, most of the irons will ship only with a 65 watt cable. So you're going to need to get a decent cable if you want to use the full power. Most of these also come with a full power cable. So you kind of do two birds with one stone. You get a decent adapter and you get a decent cable. Otherwise, if you're just looking for a cable, I'll put some recommended cables below that I recommend and trust. Okay, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there, especially my fellow Australians in Victoria with the bushfires. And as always, be cool, be kind, and I'll see you next time.